Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on my dad's 2001 Toyota Camry. Uh, we're going to be replacing the front and rear struts, front and rear uh, sway bar linkage, and the front and rear sway bar bushings. Uh, today we have all the uh, parts over here. Uh, we're working with the O'Ready brand. Uh, literally probably like one of the cheapest ones on Amazon. And these are quick struts, so they're all put yeah. together, so we don't have to use no... No widow makers today. Spring compressor. This is the front? Should yeah, be. these these should and be. This uh, is the, actually, these are the big. Yeah, these should be the front ones. And then this is the rear. Nice a bit bigger. Gloss black. They look They're pretty, pretty cool. easy install. You just take the wheel off, take two bolts out, and then take these three bolts out on the top. Yeah. Pull it out, put the new one in. You're good to go. And so then we're gonna get right these into it. are the uh, sway bar bushings. These are Moog brand. I've never heard of this. Yeah, neither am I. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we'll show you the parts in here. And then, what are these? These are the sway bar end links in here? Sway bar linkage, yeah. Yeah, so these are the sway bar end links. I'm assuming these are rear because they're a bit longer. Um, yeah, so we're going to be throwing all these into the Camry. And uh, we'll have the Camry in here all ready to go next. Okay, guys, Cameron just pulled in the Camry. And he'll show you uh, how blown the shocks are. Push down on that. The car just moves, like, way too easy. You guys can see it. Uh, do that again, Cameron. Yeah, the thing is horrible. Uh, if you take this thing like out of park, and as soon as you start moving, the whole car like will like jostle around, and like you hit the brakes, and the thing like dives around. And it's pretty. Wrong. It's very blown. Um, I, yeah, the shocks are terrible. So uh, this is a definitely a needed replacement. So we're gonna start off by going around and breaking loose all the lug nuts on all four wheels, and make sure to do that on the ground before you jack the car up. Unless, of course, you have an impact, which we don't. Uh, yeah, we don't have a big impact, but yeah, I just, I mean, I recommend just doing it on the ground. I mean, it's kind of like the traditional method. So uh, we're gonna get started with that, and we'll show you guys what socket to use. Okay, Cameron has the 21 millimeter socket on his nice worth half inch ratchet, and he's just gonna go around and break loose all these lug nuts. Uh, he works at a Toyota dealership, so he's done this quite a bit so uh he's not very strong though so uh yeah once we're done <laughs> once we're done breaking it loose we're gonna start to jack up the car all right guys we got one really stuck lug nut man it like popped loose Jeez. so yeah this is just the jack handle cheater bar because he does not own a breaker bar they don't even own a jack i had to bring the jack Yeah, most stuff we do in our cars, we don't have to lift the car off the ground. <laughs> I have access to a lift at work, so why would I do it at home? <laughs> I use a lift. Okay, guys. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, we're going to be jacking up the front of the camera now. Cameron says on the pinch weld. That's so like these little cutouts right here, you can see these little two cutouts. That's actually the uh, the main jack point. So if you go just just uh, right back from that, that's where you're going to want to put your uh, your jack stand. So and they, yeah. they have those all the way around on all unibody Toyota vehicles. Yeah, so we're just going to jack it up. And make sure you have your jack 90 degrees to the car, so when you jack it up, it slides directly underneath. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got the Camry up in the air. We used the jack. We're just going to do the front for now. And you guys can see the jack stand is in between those two notches. Uh, we got Cameron got these nice jack stands with the pins in them, so it's pretty safe. So we're going to pop the hood. Cameron, open up the hood here. Oh, that sucks. We're gonna need a piece of wood. So uh, yeah. Oh, no, just hold it. Oh, quick, look, hold. they're working. Go get a piece of wood quick. Anyways, so yeah, this is where we're gonna start to work. Is we're gonna unbolt the top of the shocks here. So these are the shock towers. Same on both sides. Cameron, go get a piece of wood. Those are not. They're freaking chill, dude. It's not gonna work. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Looks like it works to me. Okay, push it back up. God. Yeah, we need as much space as we need. There we can get. Okay, yeah, so we're going to uh, be loosening up the shock tires here, the three bolts up here. Uh, we're going to do the same thing on both sides. So what, what size are these? Let's check. Looks like a 14. Yeah, it looks like 14. We'll check here. And as you guys can see, we have lots of access. There's the blown strut in there. Yep, it's 14. So 14 millimeter, and we're gonna loosen these up. Uh, we're gonna take the wheel off, then. we gotta do that. Yeah, let's take the wheel off first. So we're gonna take the wheels off, and then we're gonna be breaking these up. 
Okay, Cameron's down here. We're working. Uh, we didn't actually loosen these because we uh, want to loosen up the bottom, all, everything on the bottom half first because we don't want the strap just falling out when we're working. So he's just spraying right now those two big bolts with PB Blaster. He's, this is the sway bar end link here. You guys can see it. Spraying those. Uh, those are kind of prone to breaking apparently. So we are spraying those with PB Blaster. And then also the end link down there. Or that's the bushing, the sway bar bushing. And he sprayed those bolts because there's two bolts that hold the bushing in. So yeah, we're gonna have to be taking off the end link bolt right there. We're gonna be, these are the two main strut like holder bolts. And then the sensor we're gonna have to be messing with and get out of the way. And then also we're gonna have to loosen up that bolt. And then the bushing, sweep bar bushing bolts down there, we're gonna have to do as well. Um, and then we'll get to this. So uh, I think we're gonna loosen up, which ones are we gonna loosen up first? We're gonna do the end so link? Or we're no, gonna, we're we're gonna, gonna take, take, this, take the sensor off. And then we're gonna take the top half of the and sway the bar link. link off, and then we'll loosen these ones down here off. Yeah, and then we'll be doing the, the sway bar after. Yeah. Because we've got to get the strut out to be able to pull the sway bar. Okay, guys, Cameron is taking off that upper sway link end link bolt with the 14. We already took off this little clip down here. Uh, just... Yeah, this it's pretty easy. You just reach around, and there's like kind of a clip that like wraps around the shock or the strut. So yeah, he's going to be taking that off, the 14, and it's the exact same side, uh, or exact same on the other side. So now, you want to work the ratchet, Cameron? Yeah, so you have to so put the vice grips on the back side, get, because the ball joint, when it's blown, it'll just spin, so you got to use these little narrow vice grips. Yeah, you got to use vice grips. Chain of locks will not work. All right, we're gonna just go ahead and get this off and then uh, come back. But yeah, we just wanna show you, you gotta use the vice grips to hold it or else you'll just spin this nut and it'll just be spinning the ball joint and it'll do nothing. Yeah. Okay guys, now we're gonna be taking off this bolt here. To the 12. Move the soft line around. And the, uh, the another connection That's for the, the wheel speed sensor. Yeah, so this is the brake line. So make yeah. sure you don't damage it or anything. And uh, yeah, we successfully got the other side off. It's kind of a two person operation, but uh, you probably do it with one person if you're not uh mentally slow like us okay guys we got the 22 millimeter socket on here and we got the cheater, cheater, bar. cheater bar on the top and i definitely recommend using cheater bar because that was super easy and i'll loosen them up be nice and gentle because you guys do, you do have to reuse these bolts and these nuts with the uh spacers just be careful because i don't want to hit the fender Be really careful on the bottom one because I just don't have that much clearance on the fender again. And it's it's loose now, what I can get it. Okay, and it's loose. Yeah, same on both sides. Twenty-two millimeter. We'll come back when those are off and we're uh, yeah, show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, we loosened up both of those bolts. They're out. These two that were there, you guys can see where the missing holes are. Now it's kind of already moving the hub. And you guys can see we have them over here. Uh, Cameron, we just used the little two hammers, or actually two <laughs> ratchets, hit them each other. Uh, and we just pounded out the uh, ends of the bolts once we got the nuts off. It came off really nice. So, yeah, uh, next, what are we doing? What? Oh, uh, get these out. I mean, we, uh, like everything's we disconnected, so. Take the end, the sway bar end link off the other side. Yeah, we can do that after we get the. So yeah, the, now we're gonna loosen these ones up. We here. can loosen up these. These are 14s up top. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll take up the top. All right, guys. So we gotta take the. We're gonna take the lower uh, sway bar mount off first, just because we have way better access to it with the strut out of here. Um, make sure when you're putting everything back in, you're careful of the soft line. Um, they can get damaged pretty easily. Yeah, and then you're gonna have to. And that's a like multiple hour fix at a dealership. So. Place your brake line, which would stink. Flex head ratchet really comes in handy here. My only flex head ratchet. It's an icon. And so far, we've been using the Worth tools, and they have been super spectacular, as always. Uh, the sockets are just shout out to Worth. Super nice. Zebra. 
Nice. And All right, we're gonna come back with that all taken off and we're gonna put on the, the new one and then put in the strut. Yeah, you'll see this, put the strut in. Okay, guys, we're gonna show you the old, this is the old one here, this is the Sway Martin Link. You can see how uh, loose it is. All the uh, rubber starting to dry rot and crack. Yeah, move that around. It moves around like a joystick on a freaking PS4 controller. And then if we set that down and look at the, the new one, you can see all the rubber is intact and it is nice it's, and firm. Nice and firm. So yeah, these were definitely dupe. Um, and I'm sure the other side is just these like These are the that. original ones. So. Yeah, so this thing has over 200,000 miles, so. Yeah, over 200,000 miles and it's uh, a 2001. So it's like 20 21 years old. years old, something like that. Yeah, this is dupe. Okay guys, we just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that actually these are directional. So this so is you'll for the right side. So you'll see that like the head is kind of canted compared to the bottom head. And then this one, this is for the left side. To. This can't, can't is actually the other direction. Different. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but basically you're going to make sure like compare the, the uh, end links to, so the, to the kit you bought to make sure it's the same. Okay guys, sorry for the background noise, uh, but we're going to torque the lower sway bar end link bolt here. You guys can see wait cameron what? if we're gonna do that why are we putting this back on here because this is gonna be like in the way oh yeah that's probably a good idea see we just messed up we're messing up a lot actually but uh so don't put that on yet <laughs> so uh but when we come back we're gonna torque that to 29 foot pounds okay all right so uh we're actually gonna do the uh sway bar bushings as well because that actually will be kind of hard to get to after we put everything back and this, these are 12s, both of these, and they're not that tight. Uh, like they're pretty easy to loosen. That's the bushing. Uh, looks pretty good. We're doing it right now. It's just we don't have a ratcheting wrench, so it's gonna take a really long time. So yeah, it's just gonna be a while because. All right, we'll come back when all, all this is undone. We'll show you how to put in the bushings. Okay, guys, Cameron is now. Torquing down the tie rod, or not tie rod, my bad, the <clears throat> soy bar end links. 29 foot pounds uh, for both the top and the bottom nut. We had to run to some part stores to get the actual correct front sway bar bushings. Um, and because these ones that we got, uh, these the ones that we got are new, but the ones we actually had were the same brand. Where did I go? I don't know. This is the one, these are the rears. It looks like this, and the front, this is the old front front looks like this it's a little bit shorter and the creases on the bottom this is actually how they're like cut and you put them on like that so yeah we had to go to three different parts of ours, so that took like over an hour that kind of stunk but um yeah we tediously got those in because they have like no clearance on the brackets you guys can kind of see down there there's like no clearance so we had to use just a wrench we didn't have any ratcheting wrenches so it took forever uh, but yeah, right now Cameron's just gonna slap these tower endings in and like we talked about earlier Make sure you have the left and the right ones um, And if it doesn't fit up all right at the end then you know you probably got the not my bad not the tie rod buttons but the Sway bar and links incorrect side um, if they don't fit correctly. So yeah, we're gonna finish that up um, he's gonna put that other side on and then we're gonna be throwing the strut in next Okay, guys now we threw the strut in just uh, he just Basically looked up under there on the fender and then pushed made sure that the three bolts on top these aren't tied down Obviously, we just threw a couple threads on just so that they are um, So it's like holding it in there and then he's going to push using the jack kind of just enough. Jack up using the brake rotor um, just enough so that the hub assembly lines up with the holes. Can't really see right now, sorry. But you guys can see we're just barely jacking it. And that just basically is like a free helper hand. It's a good tip. Uh, or you have two people. Right, we have that. two people, but as you can see, just jack it up till these two line up with the holes on the hub um, from the strut. And then uh, you can get those on. We're not gonna torque everything until We'll probably torque down the top first and then we'll torque down the bottom so it's all stable and yeah we're oh uh the sway bar is just tilted up we oh, just okay. have to tilt the sway bar down like, oh. yeah so the, it looks wrong you can see the sway bar end link is way off but if you go like this and then tilt the sway bar down 
to where it actually needs to be. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. Hold on, Cameron. See where this, you can't get it back here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, you can. Just like that. But it has a bolt on it, so we're gonna have to take it out. Oh, okay, well, I'm kind of a spaz. But, sorry for the bad camera work. But, you guys can see, he just threw it on that other one. We're not gonna torque everything down until we we'll probably do the top first. The three cut, the strut tower. You can see, boom, fits. So everything kind of self-adjusts and lines up. If uh, it doesn't line up, then probably your sway bar is like twisted or this may be too low or something. But yeah, pretty easy. So obviously nothing's tightened down. But, so we'll go back and then those down. go like that with the sensor line first and then your brake line. Put a little bolt in there and then it's finished. So we're going to go ahead and get everything else hooked up. Yeah, so down we'll do the top, probably jack it up a little bit until the threads come through and then... We'll uh, exactly the same process for the other side. Okay, camera's tightening up the top. I just want to show you the torque specs. That's not the torque wrench. He's about to use the torque wrench. 29 foot-pounds for these three upper strut nuts. Uh, and then the sway bar links are also, we're going to do 29 foot-pounds on those two, the upper and lower. Uh, did you already torque the bottom one, Cameron? What? Did you already torque the bottom sway bar and link? Yes. So, and then the big ones is these two main, the big, uh, strut bolts apparently are 156 foot pounds you guys can see right there we have this little torque spec sheet uh camera's dad printed off so if you guys are looking for torque specs um we believe that's the correct so yeah 156 pound, uh, foot pounds is a lot so they got this new big torque wrench to use on those so uh you gotta have to have a pretty serious torque wrench or just uh just a huge breaker bar and just tighten the hell out of it if you want to do that okay guys that was really fast torquing everything down so 29 foot pounds on these three strut tower nuts and then 156 on these two big ones uh, the ones actually holding the strut in it went together really well uh pretty fast and then the sway bar and links 29 foot pounds on both of those as well and those went in pretty easy so yeah putting together putting it back on is really fast we're just gonna throw the wheels on and Farm to 80 foot pounds 80 foot pounds for the lug nuts on the wheels and then we're gonna get to the back so uh okay guys we are in the back now uh the reason we're at the back seat is because we already jacked up the car and to access the top of the strut like you can do everything the same basically as the front but now you need to access the top of the struts from basically the back seat of the car so you have to rip it out the back seat so cameron show it show us how it's done so you basically just yank it's like kind of just friction fitted in there you want me to do it, Cameron? Oh, oh, there we go. Very easy. You just yank it, and then push you're gonna the have to push the belts through the holes. And boom! Now you can. This is how you steal people's seats. No, okay, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> satire, satire. <laughs> uh, awesome. And boom! Just pretty, very easy. Wow, it's very clean in here. This is actually where you get to your gas tank. Yeah, and that should be where the fuel pump is. Yeah, is in there. And like fuel filter, I think. Yeah, everything in there so he's gonna take the back seat out and throw it on top of the car uh there is metal clips but it's all right so for the bench it looks like there's just these two 12s there's a 12 on either side and then i think it just pops out the and then way. the back pops out so we're gonna remove that and then you like fold it down like you traditionally would like rip it out so we're gonna do that and we'll show you that okay guys so you didn't actually well, yeah, the side ones you have to remove, and it's this piece of foam here. Cameron, stop. And then you just basically push it up, and it sits like right here. You push it up, and then you can actually access, you can see there's one, there's two, and the third one. I'm not going to be able to show it on camera, but it's really hard to see. It's, it's back there. You can access this actually all from right here, and pull the top of the strut out but i recommend doing all the stuff on the bottom the sway bar end link the the two big strut bolts and um the sensor and everything first that way when you just do the top it's just gonna come right out and be really easy so we're just gonna do this it's basically the same exact thing there's one there's the second big one and then you have to move the sensor out of the way with this 
bolt right here and then the sway bar end links are the exact same thing and then this is where the sway bar bushing goes all the torque specs for the rear are the same um and the top is just the main big difference thing so uh we're gonna just get to work and see how fast we can do it okay guys it's been uh over an hour since i last filmed so we knocked out both this side and that side that side the wheel is already on um these are the old struts you can see the dust boots are all broken and you can see they're all wet on the bottom because they were both leaking and blown so the, this one is all ready to go all torqued the other side is actually all torqued it's just the wheel's not on and we'll torque the wheel when it comes down the only thing different we already showed you guys the back seat situation the only uh, thing different about the back that we didn't show you is that you have to remove a bolt right on the back side right here of the caliper it's a 14 and then loosen the bottom one down here it's right behind my finger i can't really show it on camera and then you basically fold the fold the caliper like this and then you can actually remove these bolts or else there's not enough room so yeah the back is uh pretty standard very handy to have a jack by the way um not only jack up the car but to kind of move the hub assembly around uh when you're putting the shock in so um yeah we're basically just going to throw the wheels on torque them oh yeah the only other torque spec that's different on the back is that the two main lower strut nuts this one and then the you can't see it's dark down there is what 83 foot pounds uh 83 or 89 foot pounds and they're 19s instead of 22s yeah so that's the only thing different about the hardware really back here other than obviously all the suspension stuff stuff but the, as far as what you're actually messing with so yeah sway bar end links are same 29 foot pounds they're a little bit shorter so you'll know the front from the back okay guys uh we just finished up the actual putting on the wheels in the back and man uh the thing we're driving around camera's neighborhood right now and it feels fan freaking tastic with every pothole is nothing you're not bouncing around anymore yeah like i uh i think i mentioned earlier like as soon as you would start moving in this thing it used to be that the you could like feel the shocks are blown like the back would like bounce around and stuff and just felt terrible right now though it feels great it feels tight it feels very smooth ride definitely worth it uh the what was it already brand quick struts or something yeah already brand quick struts on uh i think amazon amazon yeah yeah amazon. cameron's at i don't know where you, how much they were he just bought them I was imagining they're not too expensive and uh not yeah horrible a couple hundred bucks and all uh, put together fit perfectly and this is with the sway bar end links as well and the sway bar bushing so this was not just the struts so uh yeah definitely worth it um thank you for checking out the video car drives way better so uh thank you and we'll see you in the next one